What's up guys, this is Big Dog from Big Dog Survival School again. And today we're going to be talking about PDWs and you. Uh, you know, lightly touching on urban and field environments for both. Um, you know, there's a lot of different systems for PDWs and today <clears throat> what we're going to be referring to PDW as our personal defense weapon systems. Uh, what I'm going to be covering is what I feel to be the most prevalent, the uh, the most easy to obtain, and the most easy to master uh, system of all of them. We're going to cover price point for that system. We're going to cover versatility <clears throat> and transition also for that system. Uh, you know, can your weapon go from the city to the field and be just as effective in both environments? We're also going to go over it, you know, from a prepper standpoint. You know, is your pistol a jack of all trades? You know, can it cover a broad spectrum of scenarios and situations that should arise? You know, I personally feel that you should. There's no need for multiple pistols if you are planning for a bug out situation. You need to be able to grab one gun, and it needs to be able to serve a multitude of purposes. And last but not least, we're going to go over calibers. What calibers? Well, we'll get into that once we get into what weapon system we're talking about. So let's get on with it then. What personal defense weapon system am I talking about? <clears throat> That's going to be the pistol. Alright? Um, the pistols we're going to be talking about and covering today, price point's going to be from 400 to 800 US dollars, you know, based on what model you want. That's just a, a general price point you can be looking to spend. Uh, you know, we're going to be covering versatility, like I said. Uh, what can your caliber really accomplish? Uh, okay, um, what's the stopping power of your round? What's the penetration of it, or can it penetrate soft body armor, you know, obstacles, barriers? And you know transitional uh, phases. You know, can you take your gun from the city to the field, and it is just as effective in either scenario? <clears throat> but like I said, the biggest thing people like to talk about are calibers. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to get into that. I've made a chart, uh, comparative chart, mm, a little Excel work. It was super fun to compare these various colors we're going to talk about and I'll show that to you guys and that way you can form your own opinions and after that I'm going to go over what I believe to be the best pistol caliber alright let's get to it alright guys so we're back and as I said we're going to go over calibers and as you can see on the screen we are going to go over you know I picked four calibers to go over that I felt were the most prevalent calibers and caliber is that, you know, perhaps ha had a usefulness. We could be here all day if we decided to cover every caliber under the sun. So I picked the 9mm Luger, the 40 Smith & Wesson, the 10mm Auto, and the 45 ACP. Felt like those are probably the most popular calibers out there. Maybe not the 10, it's a little more exotic. But I put it in there because it is most certainly a competitor. <clears throat> Maybe you'll find out some things you didn't know. Alright, <clears throat> what I'm going to cover basically in calibers is the chart's going to go over these four calibers and it's going to cover various different aspects of them. You know, there is a, I'll put a link to the chart in the video or the, I'll link the chart in the video, drop it in there, I, I should say. Uh, that way you guys can see it because I know it's going to be hard to see when I flip to it in a minute. Uh, recoil, I didn't put in the chart because, you know, I'll tell you from personal experience and anyone that has shot these calibers, the 10 kicks the most, the 45 next, the 40, and then the 9. You know, you don't need a chart. The 10, it is a long jump from the kick of a 9 to the kick of a 10. <clears throat> if you shot a 45, you can control that nice and easy. You know, you really shouldn't have a problem with the 10. You know, where it gets in the 10 millimeter problems with recoil is you know the size of the double stack mag well most people can't wrap their hands around it but you know I digress so let's get into the chart now get in the real nitty-gritty all this stuff all right here's the chart 
So as you guys can see, you know, there's a, so many different grain weights of nine millimeter that I just picked, you know, one that gave it the best, you know, odds. Uh, 124 seemed to give it the best numbers across the charts. So that's the uh, caliber I went with. It seems to be the one people generally prefer to carry as well. <clears throat> For the 40 caliber, I went with the 180 grain weight. I don't see a point in carrying the other grain weight if you're going to upgrade to a 40. For the 45 ACP, I chose the 230 grain weight. <clears throat> and for the 10 millimeter, I chose the 200. Now, the reason behind that is I know that there's all these 180 and 185 grain loads out there for the 10, even smaller. I feel that's silly. Stick with the 40 then because it is a lot, you know, a significant more amount of recoil. It is a lot bigger of a firearm to upgrade to the 10. It's more expensive ammo. I don't feel, you know, why, and 180 grain loads, 185 grain loads are low recoil rounds. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know that. There's only two ways to reduce the felt recoil of a round, and that is to either reduce the weight of the projectile or reduce the amount of powder that propels the projectile. Uh, Federal, all the 180 grains they make for the 10 million, they're all low recoil. You can even look into it. Uh, I believe it says maybe on their site, if not in the box. You know, I used to shoot those, you know, and then I started doing some research. I'm a numbers junkie. I, I, I like my kinetic energy. You know, I like my ballistics. I don't enjoy low recoil. I have no need for low recoil. So I carry 200 grain slugs, no hollow points, just flat nose, and they do plenty of damage. So, you know... Obviously, by that little spout off, maybe you know which way I'm going to be leaning for my personal opinion later on. But let's get back to the numbers for now. Uh, for the 9mm, as you guys can see, you know, there's a, a big spectrum jump here. The foot pounds energy for 9mm averages out at about 396 for the 124 grain. It's about 420 for the 40. 400 for the 45. You got to remember, it likes to move slow. And it's 640 for the 10. Now, I know that's a huge jump, but, you know, how that converts to joules is, you know, 537 for the 9, 569 for the 40, 542 for the 45, and 868 for the 10. Now, FPS, you know, let's, let's see how they move. The 9, obviously, is the fastest moving projectile as it's also the lightest it averages out at the 124 grain at around 1180 feet per second which is about 804 miles per hour the feet per second for the 40 caliber is 1050 feet per second which averages out to about 716 miles per hour I'll fix that before I upload it in the video the 45 is at 830 feet per second 716 miles per hour and the 10 is at 1200 feet per second average and 818 miles per hour now let's just briefly cover that because that was really our basically our ballistics energy section right there uh you can see the 10 is ahead by leaps and bounds on pretty much all the all the stats there um you know you can look into the science i'm going to put a link in if you're really curious uh you can you know you can look into the science behind why the 10 does so well you know why it's the gun of choice for the homeland you know response teams and uh special forces or uh, um, special swat you know all that'll be in the links but let's get into penetration depths everyone likes penetration all right so let's get into penetration depths everyone likes to see how far it goes right now this is calibrated ballistics gel and basically it's calibrated from what I read on the various sites I got this from. The uh, baseline for all these tests is the NFU uh, calibration procedures and processes. Uh, there will be a link to that below also so you can get a feel for what that is. So these are all calibrated ballistic gels. Uh, the penetration for the 9mm and 10% gel was 10 to 12 inches. The 40 was 12 to 14 inches, the 45 was 12 to 14 as well, and the 10 was 17 to 23 inches. Now in 20% calibrated ballistics gel, the 9mm was 7 to 10 inches, 
the 40 was 10 inches, the 45 ACP was usually 10 but sometimes over, and the 10 millimeter was 15 and sometimes over. Now the FBI says in 10% ballistic gel, they require at least a 12 inch penetration depth. So all these calibers passed for personal defense. So again, a, a, any of them are a good choice depending on what type of shooter you are. Now you'll see I include something called the Hatcher Scale. And as you can see down at the bottom, I briefly explained it to you guys. The Hatcher Scale is a scale from 0 to 100 that is used to rate the effective stopping power of a handgun cartridge. A handgun cartridge with a value of over 50 is preferred for self-defense. Hatcher values of 30 to 49 produce approximately a 50% chance at a one-shot stop. While values of 15 over produce a one stop shot approximately 90% of the time. <clears throat> okay. So the Hatcher scale for the 9mm and full metal jacket, I couldn't find any. You know, at 124 grain, there's really no point in carrying a, a full metal jacket. You know, you definitely want to go with the hollow point option there. So the jacket hollow point and the numbers I pulled up for that were the 147 grain. And it came out to be a 39.9 on the Hatcher scale. Okay. Uh, the 40 caliber, again, I went with the 180 grain and full metal jacket, and it was 53.4. And the 180 grain and jacket hollow point was 59.4. Now, the 230 grain uh, full metal jacket 45 caliber was 49.1. And the jacket hollow point 230 grain 45 was 60.7. Now the 200 grain 10 millimeter auto full metal jacket scored 72 and they didn't have any info on the 200 grain jacket hollow point so I just went with the 180 grain jacket hollow point 10 millimeter and it scored a 62.1 on the Hatcher scale. Alright so you know I'll put a link to that too you guys can delve a little deeper if you want like I said this is just a brief overview. Last but not least, you know, capacity is always important. Doesn't matter how great of a caliber it is, if you're out of the gunfight in six shots, unless you can make all six count. Yeah. The 9mm comes in standard from Glock at least with a 15 or a 17 round magazine. The 40 is pretty much standard in 15 in, 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 in any uh, manufacturer. The 45 ACP, you know, is 8 in the single stack for like the Colts. 10. And 13 are uh, stack magazines are offered by Glock and several other companies. And the 10 millimeter auto comes in a 15 stack as well from Glock. So we're going to wrap up all this fun analytical stuff. I'll put a link to all the uh, data if you want to come through it yourself. And I'm going to get into the my personal opinion part of the video. Thanks.